Rick Show here um, at the chop. Just finished making some calls, uh, duck calls. So I'm gonna go on a recap on what happened this morning. So this morning we went by a ranchito, by some of the property that we have, and we have an area that we hunt frequently there. So I went there, um, and I got there, and I got out, and I was gonna do a uh, a short video, right? Well, I heard really, really strong running water, so I said, well, let me double check. I think that could be maybe in the, you know, going through the uh, tunnel or whatever. Well, the crossing uh, was full and the water was running really, really fast, um, which is a drainage going into the Rio Grande, right? So I said, oh crap, what am I going to do? And um, I decided to head to another place, about 11 minutes away, um, south, I mean north of, uh, of where I was at. And so I get to this pond that I've hunt frequently. Everybody knows about the pond and I shine my light, make a couple of calls uh, to make ensure that nobody was there. Um, so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna set up at the end of the pond, right? Well, not about five or 10 minutes later, I see a light like had to have been at least 250 yards from me. I mean, like way, way, way out there. I wasn't even in the vicinity of these guys. All of a sudden, I hear a guy say, "Hey, hey, uh, you know, we're we're set up over her." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Like 200 yards away, like the ducks are gonna come to the pond first before they even go to where you're at. You know what I mean? Because they frequent the pond. Makes sense, right? They see the water first. If they're flying on your side, they're gonna see you first. If they're flying on my side, they're going to see me first and they're probably going to land. If not, well, we'll see. Well, if they don't land and you can't get them to come over to where you're at, why don't you buy one of my calls? Because we know it's proven. So let me tell you what happened. So I said, okay, cool. I didn't even argue with the guy. I got in my car. I took off, uh, went further north uh, to another spot that I hunted with my kids. You know, I've been very successful in this area. So I'm sitting there. And um, I'm like, where's all the ducks at? Because I don't see any ducks, right? And so I'm not getting worried about it. I'm looking around and I'm just looking around, enjoying myself and, you know, and uh, photo opping and all that stuff and checking out my call. And so I decided to make, um, you know, a, a, a greeting call, you know, just a regular whap, 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 and then really faint, really light and a couple of uh, feeding calls and so nothing, I didn't hear anything back, and I'm just, you know, sitting there. I'm, I'm, I'm hunting off of the fields off of a river, right? Off the river, there's fields there. So they're gonna feed on the, they're gonna feed in the fields and then come into the water. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I see like 10 ducks just flying towards me, like they're getting ready to circle. They had shot, somebody had shot, I heard about, I heard like a barrage of shotguns going off. And so then about, you know, a couple minutes later, I see them ducks circling. So sure enough, I belt out the call to get them, you know, to, to get them to come in and they start circling and then they go really far off and they start circling and they get really close and they start, you know, they start that circle where they're going to, where they're going to come, you know, where they're going to come down and they start coming towards me, man. And, um, so I, I make a call and they're, you know, they do, they were gun shy by that time. So they just kind of, they didn't see me. I was hiding really good. You know, I was, I was in, I was really, really stashed out. They couldn't hide. They couldn't see me and they just didn't want to, they didn't see. I think the problem is, is that they, there was running water through there. So they didn't see any, any other ducks. If they if I had decoys out there, they would have, they would have came in quick, but that's what they were looking for. They were looking for other ducks. And, um, so they, uh, they just flew right by me. Well, not a half a second later, I hear Wah, wah, wah. And out of the field, or close to the field, you know, um, coming off the field, I see this duck flying, coming really close in. So I, I belt out another call and it starts to circle. It comes in, it comes in, it comes in. Man gave me probably about 30, 30 yards. Boom, I grab it. Boom, I hit it again. And sucker goes down. So I had to, I wasn't uh, wearing my waders. So, uh, <laughs> so I had to run put my waders on, I wasn't expecting it like that. You know, you never you never expect it to happen um, the way that it does. You always have this imagination in your mind or you replay these, in, you know, you replay it in your mind how it's supposed to go down, you know. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that this duck call is effective. That's that's all that matters to me is that I went out there and, uh, and, and it worked. I, I was able to call the ducks in without decoys, without anything. 
And I kind of did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure that it was the call that was that was enticing. And it worked. You know, that other duck heard it and came up, you know, and just started coming in. And so that's that's the whole that's the whole point of why I make these why I'm making calls is to bring these these ducks in, you know. And um I was I'm very, very happy, very excited. Although it was only one duck, I didn't stay out there that long, but I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with my call. Beautiful morning. So I'm waiting. Look at that. One pato down. It's always like the first time for me, man. It's always I love it. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. Um and and I'm very and I, and I'm very grateful that I was able to do that and see that and and be able to, you know, and, and be able to, you know, put that in a mental note and say, "Okay, we need to start, you know, working on some more um calls and, you know, different different aspects of that and maybe some different tones, but that tone right there, I know definitely um is going to draw them ducks in. Now, as I'll set up the decoys next um, you know, uh, ne uh, next Saturday, I'll set up the decoys and then, um, we'll go from there, you know, because, uh, I think this year is going to be really good, especially with these calls. You know, um, I take a lot of time in what I'm doing. I build them. Um, if, you know, if the reeds don't sound right, I have to pull them out, you know, clip the reeds the way that I want them to sell be sound because I want a specific sound for where we're at here in New Mexico. Um, it's it's a different it's different. I mean, you you we don't have any much water in the river right now, so you can't just plop out and then it's either there's no water in the river, and you have to find the pockets, and you have to find these side drainages that come in. They're they're inside the river and they they're coming off the main drains and they're coming into the river and you got to find those side drains. They're real small, but that's where the ducks are. But it's difficult to hunt right now because it's dry. I mean, there's water in some areas, and then you either have not enough water or you have too much water to where it's just running really really fast and it's hard to put decoys out there guys do it i mean there's a lot of guys out there that they you know they get it done they put their decoys out we have a few designated areas for duck hunting by the game and fish down south um but me i prefer to hunt on the river um because it's 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 fun for me and but it's challenging it's very challenging it's not like you know just sitting out in front of a lake and just being able to set up decoys and just blasting ducks you know you have to actually figure out what the ducks are going to be doing depending on the water if there's a lot of water so they're going to be out in the fields a lot more now i noticed that um i saw a lot of guys in the fields on their properties and they were they were you know they were they were hunting ducks on their property um the river's dry in some areas there's you can just walk across it you know so it's water is going to tell you where the ducks are um but it's very difficult so we developed a spot in stock here in New Mexico. I'm not saying that I'm the original one that did that. I mean, I'm sure there's other people that have done it in the past and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is that Snipe Hunting Outlaws was based on that because I had kids at the time and they just didn't want to sit down and wait for ducks. They just they didn't want to. So once we developed this and we started moving and uh, and, and, and going into these pockets and stuff like that and be becoming more successful... That's when we started to develop more of a style of how to hunt ducks, and um, on our, in our way on snipe hunting outlaws. So we, you know, we spot and stalk, get and try to get up close on them if we can, and then you know, and then and then and then and then harvest them. You know, not 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 a uh, water swatting or 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 jump or uh, you know or jumping them or anything like that, but just getting them to to the the whole point for me. What I what I what I like the most is that when you're on a duck and it starts to come up and you let him take off. And then you just, you try to, you, you know, you try to, you, you, you try to shoot it, you know, and I think that's the most important thing. That's what I like doing. I mean, I like to, I like to shoot them in the mid, in mid flight. I mean, for me, it's, that, that's just what I like to do. You know, it, it doesn't matter. We're all hunters. I've seen people be successful in certain ways, certain uh, ways of doing things in, in certain areas. And that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to hate on anybody. As long as you're popping ducks, that's all that matters to me, especially if you're using my calls. I don't care where you're at and how you hunt ducks, you know, as long as it's legal, as long as it's legal, because, you know, ethical, I don't really know, you know, eth every, most hunters are ethical, but, you know, um, that's, that's, that's pretty much the way that I see it, you know, we're all hunting, we're all hunting ducks, I don't care if you sit on water, I don't care if you spot and stalk, I think the, the thing that frustrates me the most is that you have a lot of, uh, 
duck hunters with eagles you know what i mean they're they're you know they oh i only shoot uh green heads or i only shoot this or i only shoot that and to the rest of us it sounds ridiculous to do that you know we're all hunters we all got to support each other um so i don't care what you shoot you can hunt however you want you know and i'm gonna hunt how i want but i'm not gonna bash you about it that's that's not that's not hunting that's just that's just all politics anyways but um as for the way that we hunt that's how we hunt snipe hunting outlaws is because um it's it's a long history. Um, my great grandpa, my tata, um, Ishmael um, Zapata, actually rode side by side with Pancho Villa, and this is a, this is documented. And he was a doctor, and he moved to Willard, New Mexico, and met my great grandmother, and then from there on, that they had my mom and stuff like that. And um, you know, and then on my on my grandpa's side. Uh, we have a distant relation to Chavez e. Chavez from the regulators. Um, and he's a distant cousin, way distant, but he's still related to us. So, and that's from Lincoln. My great grandma was an Apache from Lincoln. And uh, so they were outlaws. Um, the Spanish were outlaws. You know, so it's a big history of, it's, I incorporated all of my history um, and food and everything into Snipe Hunting Outlaws. That's what we do. That's, that's, it, it signifies the love and the passion that we have and the history that we have for the Rio Grande. Um, and, and that's why we do what we do and we hunt the way we do. Um, Native Americans hunted one way until the Spanish got here and then they started using black powder to hunt. And then it, it just evolved from there, you know. And um, my uncle was a great hunter. My grandfather was a great hunter. Um, and he, and, and his, his father was a hunter and they grew up in the Manzanos and they hunted in the Manzanos. Um, from the Manzano land grants and then they moved to where we're at now here in Valencia, New Mexico. So hunting's in my blood um, and like in most people's blood, you know, and so I, I, that's where we get the outlaws from. My grandfather was very involved um, with politics back in the day and um, he, he did some pretty awesome things for, for the city of Albuquerque and for, you know, he helped write labor laws for the state of New Mexico. So he was considered an outlaw at the time. So snipe hunting outlaws isn't just because we want the name. You know, we're we 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 are from where Billy the Kid is from. Billy the Kid wasn't an outlaw. He was a um, folk hero to us because he fought. He fought injustice is what he did, and he also went up against the Spanish, the Santa Fe Ring. So that's what snipe hunting outlaws is. It represents all things New Mexico, um, and forged by the Rio Grande. You know, we love the Rio Grande. That's our that's our lifeline. Water is life. And so that's what we believe. And um, that's what we do. But as for the duck calls, they work 100%. So uh, keep tuning in to what we're doing. Snipe hunting outlaws is totally new and totally different. This is what we're going to be doing from now on. Hunting, sitting down and talking about the duck calls, letting you guys watch us build duck calls and uh and game calls and whatever because uh, hunting in new mexico is difficult if we draw then we'll be able to show you how we hunt uh while uh, wild game um other than that we're just going to stick to duck hunting until we can actually you know there's some other over the counters that we can do that we'll be doing this year too but um just stay tuned and uh, thank you guys for uh for subscribing for liking and for uh, everything that you've done all of your support and especially for the people purchasing my calls i really appreciate it